South Sudan is in a race to get everyone vaccinated against COVID. But because of supply and logistics problems, they're struggling. The world's newest country, already ravaged by war, famine and climate change, desperately needs to protect itself from this pandemic. A quick count tells me that about 50% of these people are about to be very disappointed. And now they're in yet another race against the anti-vaxxers whose lies are spreading faster than the vaccines themselves. Today people have, have been injected with microchips that they don't need to move with your keys. South Sudan is battling a climate disaster. Heavy rains two years in a row have caused unprecedented flooding, and now there's no way to reach the remote region of Ganyel in the north of the country, except by helicopter. All of the region's medical supplies have to be flown in, leaving them critically short of essential drugs, including the COVID vaccine. Angelina Dewer is one of a handful of medical staff here. She works for a British international development organisation called Crown Agents and is on a mission to get everyone here vaccinated despite the shortage. So we are going to the facility where we are keeping the vaccines. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is where we go and uh, pick the vaccine from the cold chain to, to the vaccination site. Okay, that's the hospital there? That's the hospital. Oh, wow. Where we are going to pick the we vaccine. Get in? We pass through here, uh, through that water. Water, okay. Yeah, till we reach the cold chain system because That's of why the flooding. Yeah. <laughs> Getting into the hospital is the least of Angelina's worries. South Sudan relies on vaccines donated by richer countries. They're supposed to do that through an agency called COVAX, who distribute the vaccines that are donated. But despite headline-grabbing promises, hardly any have arrived here. South Sudan has received around 1 million jabs for 12 million people. Angelina's region, home to 200,000 people, has received just over 1,000. They arrive without notice and are often days away from their use-by date. So this is the only remaining one? Really? That's it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven vials. How many, how many vaccines, how many people would that cover? This one is for 35 people. Each, each vial contains only five doses. Five, mm. right. So, yeah, 35 people. Mm. And that's all you have left? This is what we have left to waste. Last year, the South Sudanese government had to send thousands of COVID vaccines back to their donors because they couldn't be used before they expired. The team here need to prove they can keep these vaccines cold and get them to the most remote communities quickly. I feel like I'm carrying a very precious cargo. <laughs> <laughs> this is proper, it's like gold dust, yeah. this. We're taking 20 of the doses with us today to a nearby village, cut off from the main town by recent floods. Well, I see I've got the vaccination register here. So this Nine people. Yeah, these are the people, nine people here. There are very few entries, but something stands out to me. I noticed in the occupation section, they're all officials, the soldiers. And, uh, right, so you've gone for the leaders first. The if the, the leaders are getting the vaccine, it means that vaccine is very important for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a strategy to ward off any vaccine hesitancy. Even in these remote corners of South Sudan, anti-vax messaging has arrived before the vaccine itself. With the local population now spread out, reaching the people is no easy task. So as we're heading out down the river, I can see all these mud huts and every single one of them submerged in water. They're obviously made of mud, so that's not, they're not gonna last very long. But all of these people are now displaced. Angelina's team have built a temporary health center here. Word has spread through the village, and encouragingly, there are lots of people waiting. A quick count tells me that 
about 50% of these people are about to be very disappointed. Because I've only got 20 in here. Hello. The team gets set up quickly. They routinely vaccinate people for other diseases, so the process isn't new to them or the local population. Nial is a village elder, and he's been waiting since early morning to get the jab and prove to others that it's safe. We heard about uh, other people they are hesitating to take the vaccine. They say vaccine can kill. But uh, when a doctors or intellectual explain to them, then they accept. Mm -hmm. How much experience do people here have with COVID? Have you seen anybody with a case? COVID is a killer disease. It kills many people within South Sudan. Officially, only around 140 people have died from COVID in South Sudan. But doctors suspect the true number is much higher. After all, there are only a handful of testing facilities in the whole country. If anyone is catching and dying of COVID, it's not being reported to the authorities. In the UK, a lot of people, most of the people, have had two, at least sometimes three vaccines. How does it feel for you to know that you have so few vaccines coming to this village? I worry about it. I worry about it. If people are not vaccinated, then what can we do? People will be very worried about it because it is a killer. It doesn't take long to inject the 20 doses. Many leave disappointed. It's not just the vaccines that are in short supply. Trained health workers are too. Angelina used to be a midwife. But when civil war broke out in 2013, she started running whole teams of health workers. Millions fled the country, but she stayed to keep working. Her community, she says, comes first. So Angelica, do you have children? Yeah, I have children. I have six. Six in total? Mm. Okay, how the old last, are the youngest? The, the youngest is three years. Wow. She tells me that when the fighting broke out, she had no option but to send them abroad. So where, where are they living in Uganda? They are in living in camp in the northern Uganda. In a camp, as in an IDP camp? Mm. Really? Mm. With your family? Or? Yeah, with my family. Yeah, my sister-in-law. That must be tough. Yeah, but I do support them from here. That's why I work the night. Yeah, you send the money? Send the money there. Yeah. And, and I also support. visit them. But you miss them, you miss them. So much. <laughs> oh, it takes real dedication. For sure. So this is community life, I have to, and yeah. I love it. Qualified health workers like Angelina could get jobs and even citizenship elsewhere. Many have left, but the health system here is propped up by the few, like her, who have made the sacrifice. Next morning, we're up early. We're headed to a health clinic that used to be a short drive away, but now takes hours to reach. Today is the longest journey. How long is it going to be this time? We'll come back around evening time. It's hot today, isn't it? It's going to be. Yeah, I can feel it. It's only 8 a.m. I'm starting to sweat already. <laughs> COVID vaccines need to be kept cold. That means moving them quickly once they're out of the fridge. You good? You good? Yeah, where's the vaccine? Who has the vaccine? We've already been walking for nearly an hour when we arrive at the flooded lowlands. We can't stop to rest in case the ice blocks keeping the vaccine cold melt. And it's over 40 degrees out here already. It's one of the furthest locations that they have to get to on a regular basis. If they can deliver the vaccine successfully there, they can do it anywhere, pretty much. The team decided to spread out the vaccines to cover as many places as possible, even with just a small amount. How many vaccines do we have today? Three. We have only three. Those are the three last, vials? Those are the last vial. Three vials, so 15 doses? 15 doses only. Flooding on this scale for this long has caused a humanitarian disaster. The
population here is vulnerable, especially vulnerable to a pandemic. Covid hasn't struck these communities yet, but Angelina and the team want to protect them before it does. So we've now travelled for, what, four hours, four and a half? Yeah, four and a half hours. Yeah, is that common? Is that how, how often this, do you have to do that? This is common, so this yeah. is how we have been doing it. Really? Even when we are transporting the, the medical supplies, uh -huh. the same hours we spend. What's the longest journey you've done? The longest journey I've done, uh, like nine hours. Nine hours of walk? Yeah. Arduous conditions like this mean it costs around $10 to deliver each vaccine in South Sudan, more than the cost of the vaccine itself. Thankfully, we get to the village before the cool box is warmed up. The team have done so much awareness work in the village around here that there were high expectations. As soon as they arrived, people started queuing up, but they've only got 15 vaccines and there are already 16 people here, and I can see more coming. Angelina has to start prioritising. That lady, she's number 10, and then the, the other guy, plus the two old men, this one's real... She's trying to explain to everyone that there are only five doses left, and because there are two very elderly gentlemen here, she wants them to get the doses before anyone else. Some of them are going because of what we came with is not, will, be not, will not be enough for them. Mm. That must be quite frustrating for you though. It's really frustrating. Does it mean those people are the only people who are going to be protected from uh, COVID-19? Nia Wow is one of the last people to get one of this delivery of vaccines. The health team has no idea if or when they'll get any more. She works as a cleaner at the health centre so she'd be on the front line if there was a COVID outbreak here. Have you heard people in this area talking about, uh, about the vaccine, saying that you shouldn't get the vaccine? <laughs> There aren't many anti-vaxxers out here in the countryside. There's no mobile phone signal, so people are less influenced by social media. But in the capital, Juba, it's a very different story. At Konya Konya Market in the centre of Juba, you can buy almost anything. I quickly learn rumours and falsehoods are given away for free. If you are vaccinated, you will die. I don't really believe in corona. Ooh, in Africa, no corona. Really? Yeah, no corona. It's hard to find anyone here who even believes COVID exists. And as for the vaccine... Some people, they want it. Some people, they refuse. Mm. Yes. And you're one of the ones who will refuse? Yes, I'm the one. After taking this vaccine, and then they should be infected with that disease. And then, actually, they will lose their life. Where do you get your information from? I read about this in, through the social media. Oh, really? Yeah. So like on Facebook? Yeah, Facebook, like an Instagram. Apparently, the internet isn't the only source for COVID conspiracies. I'm told there's a church on the outskirts of the city where the pastor preaches about the dangers of the vaccine. The next morning, I go to find her. His name is Gabriel Mabut, and this is his church. This small congregation has been brought together by Pastor Gabriel's confident, charismatic leadership. And for us, in this church, we don't believe in vaccine, especially the COVID-19 vaccine. There's no social distancing, and I'm the only one wearing a mask. Today, people have, have been injected with microchips that they don't need to move with your keys, they don't need to, to open their computers by clicking, they just need to, pre to, to fuss their hands on the computer and everything's unlocked. We believe that it may be another way the devil is tricking us to receive the mark of beast. Now that the church is emptied out and I'm taking in what I've just heard, I'm struck by how vulnerable the congregation here are. They don't have mobile phones, majority of them, they're not on the internet, they can't check this information. Most of them didn't even have a Bible. 
this church isn't unique. Nowadays, thousands of African Christians have a pastor who doesn't trust COVID vaccines. I asked Pastor Gabriel where he gets his information from. My information is simply from the Bible. Yeah. But the Bible, it doesn't mention microchips. It's not in the Bible, is it? It is true that the information that I have now is not in the Bible. But you also need to see uh, yeah, the world around you. There are many theories behind this, that government is using it as a tool of population control. And that's why... How, how are they controlling population? Okay. I feel that there is uh, some shift that has been put into this vaccine just to control people. This shift, of course, you know the, the work of the shift. Do you have a mobile phone in your pocket? Of course I have oh. it. And you know that the government can track your mobile phone? I know very well. They okay. are doing it. But what? they cannot track they my track psychology. All of us they, ca that. they cannot track my psychology. The only way they could do that is when they inject me with a ship. You're possibly one of the most intelligent and impressive people in their lives. Thank you. And it seems to me you're leading them astray. Not at all. I'm not leading them astray. I'm telling them to remain in the ways uh, the Lord God has called them to be. So I'm leading them into the way of Christ. I think many people would say you are wrong. You're just, just wrong. Let me tell you that I'm confidently feeling right both in my spirit and in my heart. The confidence and status of anti-vaxxers like Pastor Gabriel is causing a wave of vaccine hesitancy. Even though there are so few vaccines available, in many places the conspiracies are already having an effect. This is Yida, a small town on the border with Sudan. It's a transient place, a temporary home to refugees, travellers and truck drivers. The perfect place for a vaccination campaign, which is exactly what this team from Care International are trying to do. It's just past 11 o'clock and the vaccination team have been in place for three hours now, but so far only one person has turned up to receive it can't quite figure out what's going on. Is this anti-vax sentiment in the town? Or is it just that people here don't know the vaccines here? Either way, this particular vaccine run doesn't seem to be working out. After several hours of waiting, some people do turn up. They tell me people here are hesitant because there are so few cases of COVID, a vaccine seems unnecessary. But in reality, COVID is a lot closer than people think it is. The nearest town to Yida is Pariang, and Pariang Hospital is packed with patients suffering from malaria, brought on by the recent flooding. Welcome, welcome. I'm Shay. I'm um, Dr. Mike. Good to meet you. Yeah. Good to meet you. Dr. Mike Benjamin runs the facility, which serves hundreds of thousands of people. Many patients also suffer from pneumonia and tuberculosis, children from diarrhea and malnutrition making them more at risk if there was a COVID outbreak. This one here is our main lab. Uh -huh. It's our laboratory, hey maybe we have a look inside. Okay, let's have a look. This is our gene expert machine here. Mm -hmm. We use it for HIV, TB and COVID-19. This is the only facility in the region that can test for COVID. They've just done a test on someone with symptoms and it's positive. How often do you get positive cases? Last week we had two positive cases, and I think this one is now for this week. It's worrisome because there was some time, like two months, we didn't have uh, any positive cases. You can see just how hard it is to socially distance in the hospital. With so many patients in such a small area, every bed is full. This one basically is a pediatric ward. We okay. use it as a pediatric ward. Yeah. Yeah. Today is very full. Yeah. Yeah, because. We're having a lot of cases for malaria and then uh, pneumonias. When I visited, the hospital had received only 300 doses of the vaccine so far. So most of the staff are protected, but very few patients, some of whom are critically ill. Dr Mike says it's exactly here, amongst an unvaccinated population, that a new variant could emerge. We are worried about the new variants because so far, nobody knows uh, how virulent the new variants are, or how deadly they are. Uh, and then it's, it's of concern, of course, because if a, a new variant comes in that you don't know how to deal with, it becomes uh, a nightmare. 
And as we've seen with Omicron, a variant can spread incredibly quickly. And there's more bad news about the woman who tested positive. The person was a carer for someone who's on one of the wards here. She's been staying here for over a week. And while she developed symptoms here, she was interacting with people all around the hospital. So her infection could easily have been passed and could be spreading through the hospital as we speak. The next day, the care team travelled to one of the biggest refugee camps in the state. Pamir is home to tens of thousands of people, all of whom have fled here from their former homes in Sudan. Once again, there aren't nearly enough doses, so this vaccination campaign is mainly for community workers. Anti-vax conspiracies have been spreading in the camp, so a group of local influencers have been trained to combat the disinformation. One of them is a trainee priest. Abdullahi? Mm. Hey, oh, how are you? Welcome. I'm Shay. Yes, thank you. Good to meet you. Yeah. How are you? Oh, so welcome. Place. Well, welcome, welcome to my house. Abdullahi is 23. He fled here with his younger brother five years ago. The church he preaches in was built by the refugees out of mud, tarpaulin, and tree trunks. That's so creative. I love that. It's an impressive structure. It's amazing. It's all made from mud. But as I found in Juba, a church is only ever as strong as its leadership. You think you could be a leader? Of course. Yeah. So some leaders, if you are a good leader, people listen to you. Uh -huh. If you are not a good leader, people will not listen to you. I met a priest. He was a few years older than you. And he was saying, don't take the vaccine. It was very scary for me to see that. I believe this vaccine is tested everywhere. Mm. And the people prove it, they, it is good. Mm. That's why they prove it to inject the people. What do people in the, in the camp, what do people say? Do they want to take it? Yes. Yeah, people, most of them? Yes. Uh, first they were rejecting, mm. but after they are convinced, then they are now coming to yeah. take the vaccine. They are now accepted. Yeah. Yes. And people more are asking for it. Of course, Abdullahi won't know if he's done enough until the vaccines that have been promised actually turn up. For now, all he can do is keep pushing the facts about the vaccine and keep hoping that COVID isn't here already. Despite the best efforts of all the health workers and the NGO workers here in South Sudan, only about 4% of the population have been vaccinated so far. It's so difficult and so hard to convince people because they have so many diseases to worry about already. But spending time here, I'm starting to realise that with these new variants popping up and spreading all over the world, a massive unvaccinated population like this is as much a problem for us in the rest of the world as it is for people here. Until the West fulfills its promises to deliver vaccines to poorer countries, the vast majority of people in South Sudan won't be protected. And until they are, we won't be either. <laughs>